Welcome back to part two of painting a vintage portrait in oils using the dry brush technique and one colour, which is our burnt umber, as you can see here. So here's where we left off at part one. We've got all our basic tones, basic shapes in. Now what we're going to do is strengthen some of these tones where we want them a little bit darker and then add the final details. So to begin with, same procedure. Take some paint away from your main source there. Make sure you wipe the brush both sides on your palette to distribute the paint evenly. We're using a little bit more paint now than we did in the first part to darken the corners to begin with. But still, you want to make sure that there's no blobs of paint on there. If you get a single blob of paint on the end of your bristles, that'll leave a mark on that. If you're unsure, you can just give you brush a little bit of a wipe on the kitchen paper, paper towel, and then we'll start with the corners again. So exactly the same procedure as in part one, which is just dabbing the paint on rather than painting it. Remember, because we're not using wet paint, and there's no point in trying to paint like that because nothing will happen. So the whole technique is about dabbing the paint where you want it to go, leaving it where you work on a little bit to give the oil a chance to come to the surface. Once the oil has come to the surface, then you'll find it's easier to blend, soften your edges and so on. So you can afford a little bit more paint, as I said, but don't go overboard. If you have a, too much paint on there, if it becomes wet on your brush, then it will ruin your nice soft textures. And this is all about creating soft textures for the portrait, soft textures in the background and so on. So light layers, light to medium layers, are always best. It will give you more depth, more softness and so on. And the idea, of course, of darkening the corners is to give us a nice amount of focus on the central part, which is the face. Do the same on the other side. Just dabbing the paint on. Remember, you don't have to fill all those gaps in at this point. Keep dabbing, refreshing your brush. I'll turn that over to the top. the side of the hair. We're going to let the hair blend into the background, the edge of the hair. So we don't need to draw a hard outline around. And all the way down the side. Into these darker corners. The shoulder line is about here, so we'll have it slightly darker behind the shoulder. part of the background. And then with the paint that I've got on the brush, without reloading it, I'll darken the shoulder area. So this will be approximately the hairline, and then this will be the shoulder area. Same procedure, just dabbing, except this time, of course I'm dabbing the brush, stroking the brush in the direction of the object, in this case the shoulder, going down and around like this, rather than do this sort of haphazard stroking. And then 
we'll just have this left hand lower corner a little bit darker. Again, taking it up to the edge of the hair, which is about there. And I can come back and soften that off shortly. We don't have to do it straight away. So while we're waiting for the oil to leach out of that, we can darken other areas. And again, a tiny bit more paint as we just did. Make sure it's evenly distributed. And then we can work on the neck area above the beads. There's our jawline. And that's going to be quite dark on the, the chin going out towards the lighter part of the neck on the left hand side you get it adds more definition this darker section and the shadow of the hair down here that wants to be quite dark as well and again that's going to boost the line of the jaw around here as well and push it forward being a lighter tone remember when you're working internal values Darker tones recede, lighter tones come towards you. Of course, there's a great way of mastering tonal values in a painting. Let's do the whole thing in monochrome. Browns, greys, whatever you like. Just a single colour. Work on the tones. But as I said in part one, you could use this as an underpainting and glaze some thin layers of colour over the top. Just using a single colour if you want. Now all the tones are already set, once it's dry of course. All the tones are already set at this stage. Just add a little bit more onto these beads. There's no need to draw individual beads with your brush, just hint at the shapes, the dark shapes around there. Now we'll work on the hair, so darker strands in the hair, the hair is going to be a little bit darker still than we've got now. So use the side of the brush to strengthen the edges, sharpen the edges, add some more texture. as much texture or little as you want. Remember these lines that we're painting in now, the texture of the hair, are not going to move. The paint isn't wet enough for it to move. So all we can do with those, and what we want to do with those, is to soften those marks when the oil starts to bleach out. And use any excess paint that's in those marks blend around and add a slightly darker tone to the spaces in between. Do the same around the top. fade out into the background and the left hand side. So here's the edge of the hair here, just above the forehead. Slightly darker in the centre where we have the parting. Again fading out into the background or the top of the painting. Add more texture with the long hair on the left hand side. Hold your brush a little bit further further back. That'll allow you to get nice natural long strokes. So painting rather than drawing. 
you hold your brush like a pen, you're drawing and you can only do a small amount at a time. But if you hold your brush all the way back you can do really nice long strokes. So again, once we've done a few strands of hair like that, we can then put a few little shadows in with these pale beads while we're here. Then what we can do is work on the features, the eyes, nose and mouth, and come back to the hair once that paint has started to loosen up a little bit, come back to the hair and start to softly blend it a bit more. So it's uh, pretty much the texture of the hair as you want it. So let's go into the features now. We'll start at the top and work down. Same as before, uh, not too much paint, but uh, about the same as we've just done with the hair, I think. Let's begin with the eyebrows. And we can paint the eyebrows again in the direction where the hairs are going. So we always start going up with something middle where the nose is and then work the way around the other eye socket down into the corner and the same on the other one and just brush in the direction that the hairs are going nice and softly eyes themselves, the important part of the eyes as always we have the eyelid crease this line here and the upper eyelash line which is always a little bit darker when the light's coming from above cast a shadow over the eye dark corners where the tear duct is eyeball itself. You might be wondering why or how we're going to get a reflection on there, a highlight as some people call it. <coughs> Often you don't need to put a reflection in, a shine in the eye. It's not always required. Uh, some of the great masters of oil painting uh, in terms of portraiture I think very often never bother to put a uh, reflection in the eye. It's not required. You can if you want to. If you wanted to put a reflection in, there's a reflection on the original photograph that you get with the, the kit, if you order the kit. And if you want to put a reflection in, then you need to leave that reflection at the, at the start. You can't paint it in afterwards. Some might say, well, you could use you know, a white paint or something to paint the reflection afterwards. <coughs> but it may look a little bit out of place. Out of place with the lovely sort of soft tones that we have with our burnt umber. A little bit of shadow underneath the eye. That's the lower eyelash line, if you like. and the nostrils. So when it comes to drawing, let me just uh, correct that line a little bit. When it comes to drawing a face, in this case we're drawing in effect with our paintbrush, there are very few lines you need to draw. So the lines here around the eyes, the nostrils, fairly dark of course, and and the mouth is the lip line, the line between the top and bottom lip. And those are the essential parts. This line, of course, gives us expression. The lips themselves are not drawn, they're painted. They give a nice soft tissue of the top lip and the bottom lip. So that gives us our expression. Now what we can do 
here strengthen the tones a little bit more around the face. So we've got our details in. We begin with um, a dryish brush. So just use a little bit of paint that you've got laying around on the palette. Take a little bit off on your kitchen paper and then we can start to add a little bit more shadow on the right hand side of the face. And then go back and softly blend it. It's slightly darker in this right hand side against the hair away from the light. So pull that shadow up from the dark edge. Under the bottom lip. And then join the shadow underneath, going into the hair, so almost like a seamless shadow. A darker shadow around the corner of the eye here where the hair overlays. Again, don't try to soften the edges yet, just leave them for a little while. darker shadow on the right hand side of the nose, going over to the eye, displacement for now remember, that's all we're doing is placing that shadow around the nostril, and down the upper part of the mouth, corner of the lip and the corner of the lower lip and below the cheek. So you can see we're just building those soft shadows up little bit by little bit, placing the paint where we want it. Want to overwork it. And same on the other side, darker shadow underneath the hair, going over to the white of the eye, underneath the eye, and around the cheek. And the dark shadow underneath the hair at the top of the forehead, start at the edge of the hair and then let it fade out. And we can softly blend that shortly. So, once we've got that, then we can start to darken the hair a little bit more. We start from the centre, parting there. Almost a dry brush, but now what we're doing is softening, or blending what we've already got. So grab hold of your board, and then scrub that paint with the end of your brush. Hold your brush close to the bristles, allow you to put more pressure on. Blend it back into the background. Add a little bit more paint lower down, or it gets darker if you want to. highlights of the hair will just be around the face in that area. Notice the lines that we painted to show the strands of hair 
They're not moving, they're staying exactly where you put them. Just using a little bit of extra paint that we've got on there to soften the overall tone. Almost a seamless shadow from the hair to the edge of the jaw here. Once we wanted to, you could do lots and lots of detail in the hair all the way down to the bottom of the painting, but sometimes it's nice to leave some areas fairly untouched, fairly loose. Again, that lack of detail around the edges focuses the viewer's attention more on the detail that you have in the face. The important area, I suppose. You see, even now, even though this background was painted up quite a while ago, it's getting a little bit softer, a little bit looser in terms of the oiliness. And this allows you to blend more and more. So the great thing is you don't have to panic to soften things off. You can leave it for an hour, have your lunch, come back and there'll be more oil coming out. The more paint you have on there, the more oil there is on the surface. So the more layers you do, the more oil there is there available to help you to blend. And a little bit of that darker centre parting, darker centre of the hair, down into the forehead. And then with an almost dry brush, I'm just going to clean it up a little bit on the paper towel. You can soften these shadows that we just did around the nose. Blend them back into the cheeks there. And you can see how much softer and I suppose almost a softer tone, softer colour as well. It gets almost browner, more brown as the colour evens out on the canvas. a great way of getting lovely soft skin textures, this dry brush technique. Around the chin. And then around the cheek on that side over the neck. Again, notice nothing is moving. All we're doing is softening the colour, softening the tones. shadows around the eyes. Just using a dry brush. Whatever paint is there is going to do the job for us. To make sure we've got a nice edge around the hair, just take a little bit more paint. Emphasize that shadow away from the light. Put a few more strands in if we want to. Emphasize those darker shadows around the edge of the face. And you can continue to do this as much as you want. You want to add more and more detail, more and more dark tones, darken the hair even more. 
remember, do it in nice light layers. The result is much more satisfying, much softer. A little, very little paint on your brush at all times. Put a bit of dark into the corners, I think, just to push the face a little bit more forward. Really push those corners away. Put the blades on, we'll come back to that in a minute. Darken this corner as well. a little bit on the paper towel just to clean it up a little bit for our final softening for, for this one anyway. Hold the board and give it a final bit of scrubbing in the corner just to push those corners away, blend it back into the hair. All those little gaps that we have in the texture of the paper are now filled in, in those corners. So we've got a nice radiation now from that very dark corner into the hairline. A nice soft blend. Check. Find a little bit of softening around the face. And I'm going to call this finished for our demonstration. Uh, don't forget, of course, coming up at the on the screen at the end, details of how you can order the workshop pack, which will include a, a sheet of linen canvas, uh, the brush and the paint required to do at least this portrait and the paint you get in that kit you'll probably do a, uh, another one or two i guess so details of how to order that coming up on the screen shortly uh, as well as a link to my facebook page so if you do have a go at this at home i'd love to see your results on the facebook page There's our final softening, I think, completed. So, once again, thanks for watching. Um, do follow by the tutorials on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, the more the merrier. And hopefully you enjoy this, hope you enjoy watching, and you'll have a go, and we'll see you next time.